what I have here today what is this oh May 25th 2015 it's a Howard pocket watch 16 size open face as it's called powered uh, I think it's railroad grade anyway I'm going to uh, take it apart today let's do that <sighs> okay uh, what am I going to do first I can take the hands off It looks like a glued on crystal. Wait, I'm going to rotate the hands. A much preferred location, I guess. I guess that looks good. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit, too. Okay, uh, hand pullers. Oh, man, I forgot the hand pullers are screwed up. Damn it, I didn't fix them. I gotta use different pullers then. You know, it, it broke. You know, years ago I used it on, I don't know what I was using it for, but uh, it broke and then I fixed it and then it broke again. Maybe I have to get a new pair or a different type or something. So I'm gonna use my. Uh, I'm going to use these. I like to use these. These pullers that uh, I made for removing hairspring collets. I seem to like those. Even though I did make some other hand pullers out of aluminum wire, but uh, I still like these the best. Uh, let's see. I think it's easier to take the hands off while the watch is in the case. Yeah, see this is going to give me grease. This is going to shoot off. Where's the plastic? I saw this in uh, some guy who makes videos on watch repairs. Someone who knows what they're doing. Unlike me. And he always uses plastic. He puts a piece of plastic over the hands. That way they don't fly and you don't mar up the dial. Oh, this ain't good. Oh, I suck they're on tight. So if I didn't have that covered, you know, things would be going into orbit right now. You know, I didn't get any containers. Shame on me. So with the hands. And then we see if we can get the second hand off. That's going to be trickier. That one, I'm not. Let's see. Since there's really not much clearance, I'm going to we can zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Not much clearance underneath. Now this one you got to do both sides at the same. There's a post still there? Yeah, okay, I didn't break anything. Yeah, I think we got to watch out for second hands. There's some time, you got to put even pressure on each side when you pull up, otherwise you'll snap the post off. The hour and minute hands uh, is you know, much sturdier, so it's more forgiving. I'm going to take these hands and put them someplace else. I'm going to put them somewhere where they don't get in my way. Yeah, everything's in my way. So that's the plastic trick. Okay. Uh, now we're going to... Oh, this is a swing out bad boy. Oh, swing out. I didn't know this one was the swing out. The swing out case. See, the crown I already, uh, I think I keep it pulled up. Let's find out, because this is a swing out. Let's see, do I keep it pulled up? Yeah, okay, because now it swings out. I didn't know this was the pull out. 
the swing out case. Uh, Chase, how, how am I going to make sure the main spring is let down? Uh, I wanted to do that while I was still in the case. I can't do that now. Oh, anyway, this is a Series 11. Howard. It's got that uh, funky bridge. What does it say? It's a Series 11, you know, right there on my fingertip. is 21 joules. What else does it say? E. Howard Watch Co. Boston, USA. Railroad chronometer. Chronometer. And then in there it says something, too. Railroad adjusted temperature five positions. Wow. So let's uh, take it out of the case. Well, it has to roll over. It always rolls in the direction that you don't want it to roll in. I wonder why it knows that. Ah. Let's see. So I'm going to take it out of its case. Man, I thought this was the uh, the normal one. I mean, the one with the case that wasn't. It's too late now. Too late now. Here's a container. Too. I should get out the brass tweezers. Let's see, does this just drop out? Where's the brass tweezers? Here they are. I had two sets of brass tweezers. I mean, two pairs. But one of them fell. And I don't know where it went. I thought when I cleaned up, I would find it. And I cleaned up, but I didn't find it. It's like it disappeared. Usually when I drop stuff on the floor, eventually I get it back. Well, most of the stuff I get back that I drop on the floor. I get back when I clean up and I find it again. Let me put this into the side. I can't see what I'm doing. Anyway, so there is the Howard movement. I'm going to pick it up with my greasy fingers. And let's put it in the holder. I'm not going to squeeze it. So, let's see, there it is. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And I think that's about it. I don't, know if I, have to, I don't remember what angle I used to do this at. Maybe I should change the angle a little bit. See, my normal tripod is... Uh, Is not doing good. Whoops, wrong way. Well, let's try this one then. Okay, there's your Howard uh, Series 11 chronometer with the uh, the funny bridge. Ah, let down the mainspring. Let down the mainspring. Well, I'm gonna cheat. Can I use these tweezers? No, because I don't have the, there's a tool that you would insert into that, where the stem would go. But I do not possess, I do have some of them, but I don't know where I put them. I'm going to cheat and see if I can use a screwdriver, but uh, it looks like I might not be able to cheat. Okay, I can use this screwdriver. And where's the pin? I use this pin. I found got this pin. Let's see. Oops, wrong way. The uh, mainspring has been successfully let down. The thing ran down on its own, so I just didn't have to take much off of it. So there it is, okay. 
Oh, I didn't notice that before, but there's some, there's some discoloration on this. I don't know if that's been rubbed down or something right over here. Yeah, you can see that in the camera. It's like a brownish color. Oh, well. Let's see. What am I going to take off next? Maybe I should take off the dial. How does this dial come off? one of those snap-on dials. Damn it, it's a snap-on dial. Yeah, what I mean by snap-on dial, there's no screws. The little screws around the perimeter. There are none. So the dial is snapped on, but usually they give you a groove, but the only groove I see here is with where the lever is. See, I never took part one of these before, so. But I, I've taken part hard with 12 sizes, but not 16. And I know some dials are screwed and some dials are snapped. And this looks like it has to be a snap dial. And I'm not seeing any little screws. Oh, well, let's see if it's snapped. Well, the screwdriver's too small. I'm going to use something brass. That one's still too small. How's this one? This one's too big. I don't know. That one's a little bit too big. Let's see this one. Oh, what a pain. Yeah, whoops, there it goes. Wow, that's not much uh, holding that on. That's disappointing. I assume. So there it is. What does it say? Switzerland. It's definitely double sunk, I think, yeah. Wow. I should do a video on dials, but uh, I gotta get a bunch of dials together. So it's a snap-on dial. Huh, okay. Well, you learn something new every day. Now, what does it look like underneath the dial? Maybe you want to see that. Oh, crap. Well, that's what it looks like underneath the dial. And I lost the little washer thing. And a little washer thing goes there, so that's... Oh, I guess the serial number. So there's the lever set. Who oh, wants the lever set move? That's the lever set. It's a snap-on dial. I wonder if we can take this off. Oh, that doesn't want to come off. Good. If it doesn't want to come off, then uh, we'll leave it on so I can get this video on the road. We're going to use the wider screwdrivers. So, oh yeah, the proper way is to remove the balance. So, this is my deal. I don't like to let my hair spring dangle. So, I'm going to take, I'm going to... Loosen this so I take the balance off and leave the uh, hair spring. Excuse me, I take the balance calc off and leave the hair spring and balance behind. Now, usually they put pry points, but they don't have any pry points on here. How am I going to get this off? Use my tweezers and just ah, that sucker don't want to go. Hmm, what a pain in the neck! Man, I thought this would be a quick video, but it's turning out to be a pain in the neck. I don't want to scratch anything.
Wow, that's tight. Damn, that's tight. I'm gonna get that off. Well, I see something here. There's a little bit of a, a gap. I have to tighten this up a little bit. Let me get a smaller screwdriver. I see a little bit of a gap. Hmm. Wow. All right, there's a gap here. It's my mistake. There's just a, such a tiny little gap. Holy cow! I see just a... Wow! Damn! That sucker don't want to go! Oh, I'm so stupid! Why am I so freaking stupid? Idiot. Freaking didn't take the damn screw out. Crap. Why didn't you tell me this? You people are watching and you're not saying anything. Idiot. Stupid. I'm trying to do. At least I didn't force it till it broke. Damn it. Let's see. Ugh. Still fights. Damn it! See, I haven't done one of these videos in a while because I've been very busy. Work doesn't leave me much time to do this stuff. So there is the balance cock. Yay! It says something there underneath it. No, oh, it's got a friction staff. I don't know if you can read that. I think this has all matching serial numbers too, probably. Damn it, I almost broke the friggin' watch because I'm stupid. Uh, I'm gonna take the balance out. That's interesting. They got a groove here. But in order to, the groove is to clear for the staff, but then you got this ring here for the uh, pallet fork. How are you supposed to <laughs> take the balance out when that's still there? And this has a double roller. Well, that's stupid. That, that, I don't know. I mean, see, they got the groove for clearance. And, and yet, I don't know. You know? Okay, now we take out the pallet fork. Damn! I almost forgot to unscrew this screw. I gotta get a different moving holder, too. One that supports all the way around. I'm using the brass tweezers now. Oh, that's what that's for. That's to pry off the uh, the part. It's not for clearance on the balance staff. It's for prying. Oh, see, I'm learning something new. See if I can get it off. Get the pins. And there it is. Wow, Hamilton has old watches, so they use something like that. Put it in the same container. So there is your pallet fork. Notice that when I remove the pallet fork, the train does not rotate. That's because I let down the mainspring. I'm going to put that over here. Okay, and now we go to the, I guess, the main bridge here. Oh, we can use the bigger screwdriver then. It's too big. 
Okay, I got some of the screwdrivers here. Which one of these is smaller? I don't know. Excuse me. This one fits nicely. So that's one. You gotta be careful when you're unscrewing these screws. You know, you don't just start spinning the screwdriver like a bat out of hell. Because what's going to happen is it's going to fly out of the groove and you're going to scratch up your plates or your bridges or whatever. You're just going to scratch something. So there is no rush. Well, that one's a little loose. There is no rush. Whoops, see? I think I need some more containers. I don't prepare for these videos too well. So that's that screw. Two. That's another thing that ticks me off when you unscrew it and it still hangs up. And now we have the bridge. Let's see, I'm going to go like this. Wow. There you go. I think that's loose. Yeah, okay, so we're going to lift up the bridge. Mark is a good lift up spot. There's the bridge. Woo! What's underneath the bridge? We got a serial number and some dirt. That looks like rust over there. What was that? Oh, that was over here then. Oh, that's the rest for the case screw. Yeah, that's okay. And there it is. These are all pressed in jewels. Except for this cap jewel that's screwed in over there for the escape wheel. Wow, it's not much of a plate. Yay! And then there is the rest of the train. Uh, can I start removing some of the train? Yes, there is your escape wheel. And this one, I think, is the fourth wheel. That's the one that holds the second hand, because you can see it's got that extra long pinion. Is that bent? No, it only looks bent. I put that aside, and then this is the third wheel. I'm rotating this so I can grab it. Let's see if it comes out. Oh, it comes out too. Third wheel. Wow, it looks pretty clean. And I can't get the cent second wheel, uh, center wheel out because I did. I should have taken this off. Let's use the screwdriver to do that. Let's see. Some watches, these are... Got to turn it the other way. Let's see. This should be unscrewed the normal way. Uh, yeah, on some watches you have to do it the other way. Oh no, maybe it's that other screw. No, my mistake. This screw is the one you gotta watch out for. That one sometimes you gotta turn it the other way. And let's see, does this come off easily? Yes, it does. And there's nothing under there. Oh, the spring. That's upsetting. That spring came loose. Maybe that's when I was doing the uh, letting down the main spring. So what is that? Where was that? I think that spring was under here. How did that get out like that? Huh. Well, anyway. It's out, it's out. I'm gonna look at the video and see where I screw up. Looks like there's oil there, maybe. I don't know what that... I think I could take off this piece. I don't know which way this turns, though. 
you know, I'm not going to fuss with it right Because like I say, sometimes they turn, you know, because the way you wind your watch. And see, there it sits that way. It will unscrew the screw so they thread it the other way so it doesn't. So I'm going to worry about that another time. I'm going to get the show on the road. Oh, that one didn't even come out. See, that's the thing when you got these old watches, you don't know what the heck you're going to get. Oh man, that's tight. Holy cow. I have to look up when they made this watch. Oh man. I hate to push down. Oh, these suckers are just camming out. Try a different screwdriver. Let's see, we got this red one. It's very upsetting. Oh, wow. Okay, got that one out. And the last one. Okay, got the last one out. I wonder why that one was so tight. Is it rusty? It doesn't look rusty. And three. Should get a smoother surface so I can rotate this easily. Now how am I going to get this off? Are there any pry points? No. Maybe I use the... Uh, I don't want to use the mainspring barrel. I can't believe it. There's no pry points. Oh, there's one. There's something over here. That looks like a groove ground in when they're making it. Oh, that doesn't work either. Man! How does that get off? I don't want to scratch this. I really shouldn't use the tweezers like this. How am I going to get that off? I don't want to use the mainspring barrel. That's a pry, so let's see if I can wedge something. This clearance here. Wow, that really just doesn't want to go. Okay, I got it loose. You know, because the plates are nickel. Or some nickel alloy. And you don't want to be denting them up and scratching them up. Well, I think that's loose enough. What's under here? Oh, that's at that. There's a hole there. I don't know what that hole does. Is that clearance for something? I don't know. It's got a number on it. Oh, the number's on the front. One three one three one. Let's take that off. What was the number on this plate? Oh, one three one. That matches. Great. You know, maybe I should have taken that winding and setting stuff off first. Here's the barrel. It's got the uh, T end for the mainspring. Huh. I 
think I'm gonna see if I can lift this up. Oh good, it just comes right out. There's some winding and setting stuff. Wow, I think this is all one piece. It's two pieces. This one piece clutch thing and the other piece looks like it's just one piece. That's a lot of machining. I'll take that out too now. <sighs> I wonder if we can read this stuff. What does that stuff say? Railroad adjustment temperature five position. That's what that says. And we got banking pins here and how does this all look? It doesn't look bad. There's some crud in there. I don't know what that's from. Okay, let's flip this thing over and I'd take the center wheel out. I wanted to take the center wheel out. Wow, that's like... Man, why is that so hard to get off? This is the arrow wheel, and that usually just slides right off. Okay, it's crud. Crud holds it together. And then there's... I gotta get a cannon pinion puller one of these days. Let's see how this mechanism works. This is, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to take this out, this mechanism. Because I'm, uh... I'm lazy. <laughs> Damn straight. Here they should get a, uh... Oh, man! That doesn't want to come off easy, either. How's that held in place? Friction. You know, I'm going to have to put something, I don't want to scratch. Wow, this sucker's on tight. Wow. Well, at least it felt tight. Maybe it was just held on by crud. Crud has a tendency of doing that. It's held in place because it's corroded. And my center wheel dropped out. And there is the center wheel. I think that's about it. I don't know if I'm going to take this stuff off. Well, maybe I will later. This is a cover plate. It looks like a cover plate, and you got a couple of gears here. This is some funky looking spring. Wow, that's a funky looking spring. Spring here for this lever, and this end here curls around the spring for this piece. And we got the uh, jewels. And these posts are. What are they? Where's the rest of them? Oh wait, what is that? Say I got something here and there's something here on the other side. And I don't even know what that does. I can see some oil residue here. I'm curious about these posts, the support columns. Oh, those are... Uh, looks like they put something in there and they pounded it so it stays. Where's the rest of them? Oh, one, two, three. Yeah, that's what they did for that. Oh, well. Anyway. I've used up enough of my time. Uh, well, the jewels don't look too cruddy from the side. Usually you get a layer of, you know, dried oil and junk around the jewel holes, but uh, these look pretty clean. Either because they never oiled it, or I don't know what they used. 
And what's on the other side again? Maybe I'll have to take this off and... Uh, I'm not going to remove this spring stuff because I don't like springs. They scare me. So maybe I'll put, put some oil there. Maybe I should take this off. Because that looks harmless. Let's see if I can take that off. It's not too small. Looks better. If it's a pain in the ass... I'm not going to take it off. Oh, it's turning. I go real slow. Real slow. It looks like one of those screws that will... Once you get up high enough, it'll slant to the side and it'll shoot off. And there's that piece. I'll leave the screw in a little hole. And we got... I guess this is a minute wheel, I think. And this is some intermediate thing for changing the time. Maybe that goes a certain way. I don't know. So there you go. That's about as far as I'm going to go right now. Uh, these got a bunch of capsules here. Look like capsules. Yeah, capsules. Okay, so let's do a group shot and uh, call it a day. What kind of group shot am I going to get? I'm going to get a crappy group shot because I ran out of... I was too lazy to get containers, so... <laughs> so, yeah. There's all your pieces and bits. Bits and pieces for your Howard 16 size series 11 pocket watch. I'm going to give this a cleaning and then I'm going to hopefully assemble it. So, anyway. Oops. Let's leave you with the semi-group shot. Uh, well, we're going to make it go at an even number. So anyway, thank you. Oh, and there's the case if you want to see the case. Blah, blah, blah with the hands. Yeah, one thing about Howard. Yeah, there's two Howards. I forgot to mention that. This is called the Keystone Howard. And then you got the Howard Howards, I guess. Meaning that the Howard Howard, I don't know when they found it, in the 1800s. And then they crapped out. I forget when, and then Keystone bought the name, and they started making watches under the Howard name. So that's why they call them Keystone Howards. So people confuse the two, but uh, they're separate entities. And two different kinds of watches. And this movement reminds me of, uh, I think it's a New York Standard movement. Anyway, I, I ramble on too much, so. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. I hope you enjoyed the program, and enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to let it go at 15.